When you're building a modern web application, authentication is often the first thing that you would want to set up. And Clerk makes this incredibly fast. But by default, it starts with a development instance. When you want to go live securely, you need to create a production instance of your Clerk application. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to take our Next.js Clerk starter application. We're going to deploy that to Vercel while also taking our Clerk instance to production. There are also timestamps down in the timeline. So if you want to jump around to the section that's more applicable to you, feel free to do so. So what's the difference between dev and production in Clerk? Well, dev instances are optimized for speed. They use shared OAuth credentials. So let's say you select to sign in or enable sign in with Google. Now that uses shared credentials so that you don't have to go and spin up a project in your Google Cloud Console. It makes it fast when you're developing, but when you want to go to production, you have to have your own instances, your own projects, your own credentials. Now in development, Clerk allows HTTP, which is great for local development so that you can talk to your Clerk instance if you're a local host. And there's minimal setup to get started. But for production, it requires HTTPS. You have to provide your own credentials and you need to authenticate under your own domain. So it requires some DNS settings on your end so that your Clerk instance is also verifying identity through your own domain, which reduces the risk of cross-site scripting and improves trust with your users. Now, before continuing with the steps to create a Clerk production instance, let's actually deploy our current project to Vercel using development instance from Clerk first and hook it up with our domain. And then we're going to talk about turning or creating a production instance in Clerk as well. Now I have this local project running, which is a next Clerk Shatzian starter. There's a link in the description. This is a template on GitHub. You can just clone it, use it as a template. It's already hooked up with Clerk and Shatzian. It's now also running on localhost 3000. It has one protected page just to show you how to do it, which is dashboard theme support and chat CN, as I mentioned, and it's hooked up with Clerk. So let's go to Vercel and deploy this to Vercel. So I have this next Clerk chat CN. I'm going to import this. And let me just copy the environment variables as I have them here, which is for my development instance inside of Clerk. So environment variables, let's copy these here. And I'm going to delete this one. So I have my publishable key, secret key, sign-in URL. It has a um, dedicated sign-in page here or sign-in sign-up page. And let's deploy. All right, seems like our application is deployed. Let's continue to the dashboard and let's try to visit the site. This is our live production app, which is called Next Clerk Chat CN. Interestingly, the same as our template name. And I can go ahead and actually sign in to test this out. We're going to actually make sure that the user is already created in Clerk as well. All right, so I'm logged in. I can visit the dashboard. I can see the user information. So it's working and it's live on a Vercel provided domain. So let's go to our Clerk instance. This is the same Next.js Clerk has started. I can see this user right now. And as you can see, I'm in development. We're going to later on create a production instance after we push this to our own domain. But for now, we're going to just work with the development. I copied uh, the API keys that I have for my local development or for my development instance. You can also get them from the API. Um, this is what you would use, which has the PK test or the test um, prefix, which shows that this is for the development instance. Later on, when we create a production instance, we're going to change these API keys. And a common mistake where folks create the production is that they forget to change this keys, which is the way that you hook up your application, your Next.js application to the Clerk production instance. But for now, let's go back to our Vercel. So under here, let's just create a domain. I've already purchased a domain. It is Next.js Clerk Starter. And we want to set this up so that instead of using a Vercel application or a Vercel domain, we want to use our own domain. So let's go and add a domain. 
This is suggesting for me to redirect the root domain to the www subdomain. So I'm going to hit save. And this is going to give me some DNS records to set inside of my DNS provider. I forgot to mention I'm using Squarespace domains, which is Google domains. You might use a different domain or DNS provider. There's also another option to set for cell DNS as your DNS provider so that you can set all of these uh, different DNS records inside of Vercel. I'm not using Vercel as my DNS provider. I'm still using my Squarespace domains. So therefore, I need to set this specific records that Vercel provides me inside of my DNS provider. So let's go to the first one and see what this is. So we have to create an A-type record with a value of at. This is pointing to our root domain and we're going to set it to this IP. So let's copy this. Going back to my DNS provider under DNS. Now I can set some custom records. Now sometimes you might get, as I'm getting here, some defaults. These are also A-type records which are going to interfere with what I'm going to set up now. So I'm going to delete all of these defaults because I'm not going to be using those. Um, for the email security and domain connect, I'm going to leave those. So let's go ahead and add a record. The host is going to be at sign pointing at our root A type. And then I'm going to just paste in the IP that I had or copied from their cell dashboard. Now that seems to be taking place. Now the second thing that I need to pass in is a CNAME record for my subdomain. So it's a CNAME record and I'm going to copy this value here, going back to my Squarespace domain again, add a record. This time the host is www, type is CNAME, and the value is what I copied from Vercel dashboard. Now this might take a few minutes for Vercel to pick it up, but once it picks it up, we basically would have our, our application deployed to our own custom domain instead of this Vercel provided domain that we had. So um, you can just check this site domains again. This refreshes. Now we can see there's valid configuration. So Vercel picked up on our DNS records. And now we are live on our own uh, domain. So let's go back to our application. Now if I click on this pop domain that I have, which is a custom domain, it's just clerkstarter.com. Our application is live here. If I go ahead and sign in with the same user I created before, I'm now logged in. I can go to the dashboard, see the user information, just like before, but from my own custom domain. But the thing to note here is that I'm still running on Clerk's development instance. I haven't set up my own OAuth credentials, and this is using a shared OAuth in development, which is not ideal for production. So let's look at the documentation for the steps involved to take our Clerk application to production. Now, the first step is to create a production instance. So let's go to our Clerk dashboard, click on create production instance. Now you are faced with two options. One is to clone your development instance. This is going to copy some of your settings, not all of them. Some of them you have to reapply inside of your production instance, but it just clones your development so that it's easier for you to set up your production instance, or you can start from scratch. I'm going to go ahead with the clone development instance to copy over all the settings that I have, even though I haven't had any settings or specific configurations in my app. And now it's asking me for my domain. Now let's copy the domain that we have from here. And then create instance. Now this is going to take you through the steps involved for you to set this up in production. And to finalize the steps, First, we have to add our social connection credentials. So let's configure this. Each of the providers that you're going to use in Clerk, like Google OAuth, Facebook, Apple, and whatnot, have a dedicated page inside of the documentation that you can review. For Google, I have it over here as well because Google provider is the only one that I'm using in this instance, but you can just uh, reference the doc link in the description for any other provider that you're using. So let's go back to our Clerk. Let's see, configure here and see what we're faced in. Well, because we copied our development instance, we're using the same Google provider that I had there. So that's the only thing I have here. Now to complete this, we need to create a Google Cloud project and create some credentials to bring in here. So let's 
do that inside of this application. Now, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and create a Google Cloud account and then create a project by clicking on this icon up top. If you don't have any projects, you can go ahead and click on the new project, create a new project. I've already done that. And then you'll be landed on this page where you can go to APIs and services. Now, if this is the first time that you're going to create a credential, you have to complete what's called an OAuth consent screen before you create your credentials. So let's get started with this. I'm going to give this an application name, next JS clerk starter support email let's select our support email next it is going to be external let's also provide our email here and then let's continue and create this OAuth screen once we have this done we can now go back to our API and services and go to credentials and here we can create new credentials OAuth client ID application type web application we can also give this a name so next js clerk starter uh, origins and redirect uris is given to you in this dialog so we have the authorized redirect uri you could copy this from here there's no need for uh, the javascript origin so you can set the uri here as clerk provides you and then go ahead and create now this is going to give you the client ID and secret that you need. Again, these are not information that you should share with anyone. I'm just showing it because I'm going to delete this app. But copy the client ID, bring it back to this model. So that's where the client ID goes. And then for client secret, we're going to copy the client secret and bring it back to our application. The scopes are already set here. If, you, if there's any specific scope you wanted to add, you can add. But this is already what you would need. You can also toggle this option to allow the users to select an account when they're using this SSL connection to log into your service. So let's update. Let's go back to the overview page. Now to finish the last step is to set up our domain. So let's go configure. Now this is going to show you the necessary DNS configuration you have to set on your domain for your front-end API, account portal, and also emails so that clerk can issue some SSL certificates for you to deploy your app to production. So let's just start from up top. We have the front-end API. We have to add a CNAME record, as you can see here. Let me make this a bit bigger. Uh, for clerk, pointing to this. So let's copy this. It's a CNAME record pointing to clerk. Let's go back to our Squarespace domain. Under custom records, I'm going to add a record. Now the host is going to be clerk, the type is going to be CNAME, and the value is what I copied, so that I'm going to save that, going back to this page. We have to set another CNAME record called accounts, pointing to accounts.clerk.services, so let's go back here, add another record, the host is accounts, the type is CNAME, and it's pointing to account.clerk.services. Let's save this up, going back to this page. We have three settings for emails. So CNAME records all of them. So let's copy this, add a record, type is CNAME, and it is should point to this value. So let's bring that value in here, save this up, go to the next one, let's copy this, Let's add another record, type CNAME. This should point to that guy. Paste this up, save it up, go back. And the last one is another record, type CNAME, which should point to this last one. All right, so we've set all of this up. Let's go back to our clerk dashboard, and this is going to take some time, but you can always hit this verify config manually to refetch your DNS config when it's populated from your DNS provider to sync in with clerk. So let's hit this. Okay, it seems like we are all set. Now this is going to go ahead and issue our SSL certificates and until this is done, it here it still shows unverified even though all of our settings or DNS records have been properly populated. So we're going to wait for this to happen. All right, seems like our SSL certificates are issued. Scrolling up, we should have our DNS config verified. 
going back to the overview page, we now have successfully created a production instance for our Clerk application. But keep in mind that our live app is still using the development instance because we haven't changed the API keys, which is how our Next.js app is connected to our Clerk instance. So let's do that next. Under your settings, you can scroll down to the API keys. And now you should get the live API keys, which have this prefix of like live. So you can copy these to go back to our Vercel, go to settings, go to environment variables. And what we can do, since I copied both the name and the value, I can go ahead and remove this, as well as my secret key. Then I can create new ones by just copying what I have here, which is the publishable key and the new live secret keys. So I can go ahead and save this up. Now, this is going to ask me whether or not I want to redeploy. I'm going to hit redeploy, but if you don't see this here, you can always come to your deployment and create a new deployment if you needed to. This is so it picks up the new environment variables now going to our live application now we shouldn't see that you could see that it automatically logged me out because that user that was logged inside of our domain was from the other instance that we had so under the production we no longer have that user we had before that user lives inside of our development we can still use this instance and the api keys and the credentials from our local development server but for production, we now have a new instance, a new environment, which uses its, its own API keys and it has its own data. So the user is no longer here, which means I have to go ahead and create a new user. So if I sign in here, I'm now logged in. I can go to the dashboard to see the user information. And if I go and check my user dashboard here in Clerk and give it a refresh, I now see this user inside of my production instance as well. Now I want to mention one last thing before we wrap this video, going back to the documentation, and that's the idea of authentication across subdomains. I want to mention that by default, Clerk supports authentication across subdomains. So if you have example.com, it also supports your subdomains like dashboard.example.com, admin or accounts.example.com. So that comes out of the box with Clerk. You can get authentication across your subdomains. But on top of that, we also support authentication across different domains. This is where you have different top-level domains like example.com and example.ca or facebook.com versus instagram.com. We have a dedicated video on the channel where we walk through an example of this, actually deploy two different projects to the different domains and make one to use authentication across the other one. So we would set what we call the satellite domains that authenticate against a primary domain. And for that, you have this dedicated tab under your config, exactly where we were setting up our domains. You might have noticed we have the satellite domains. You can set as many satellite domains as you want. And this is enabling authentication across different domains. Definitely watch the video that I mentioned linked in the description. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.